Hi, this is One Voice Makes a Difference podcast. I pray that today, one voice will be a blessing to you. And above all else, I pray that God's voice will be heard among this God's story. Enjoy today's episode. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to One Voice Makes a Difference podcast. So glad that you joined us today. Here we are in season two. Can you believe it? We're already here. We've already done 100 episodes, and now we're in season two, episode seven. And today I have a special friend with us, um, Angela McCurdy. She just recently moved to Statesboro, and I've had the privilege and the honor to really get to know her You guys, she has a powerful (laughs) testimony. Mm -hmm. I am so inspired by this lady because she's walked through so much and she still loves the Lord while she's doing Mm -hmm. it. All the grief, the pain and the loss that she has walked through. The Lord has been the center of her life. And if if you can get anything out of this podcast today, I pray that you would put Jesus in the very center of your life, because if you do that, you can get through anything. Yes, you can do anything when you put him in the center of your life. If you put him to the side and you just want him with you on the side, you know, you'll get through so far just within yourself. But if you want to go further than you can do within yourself, invite Jesus to come and live in the center of your life and navigate around what he is doing. So I want to introduce to you today, Angela McCurdy. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you for being you. here I'm today. To be here. So you're from Savannah, Savannah right? Savannah, Georgia. My uh, family were the original boat people from the England in 1700s. Ooh, wow. <laughs> so you native Savannah? Yes, I am. There you go. Wow, yeah. that is interesting. So you've lived there your whole life well uh, when when my husband and i got married in 1990 we moved to los angeles for 13 years and came back in 2003 but i'm about as concrete in the south as you can get okay yes. and now you're in further south now states further, for us. Yes. <laughs> yes i love it so angela is an author she's a writer she's a speaker mm-hmm. she's a counselor she has a master's in christian counseling and she's the author of a book called marcus the Risen Warrior. The it's, Risen Warrior. I love teens. Yes. And um, I was not raised in a family that knew the Lord. And had I had somebody intervene in my life when I was a teen, I would have definitely taken a different path. Mm. So this book is about three young boys that are called to fight the fight of good and evil. One's been lured into the occult and the other two are trying to rescue him out. And I wanted to make sure that this book was not Christian fantasy writing. I Mm -hmm. wanted to make sure that it was it was based on actual events. So I looked up police reports and I did a lot of investigation about drugs and and stories of people having these out-of-body experiences and all the stuff that most of us are not aware of and Mm -hmm. about satanic ritual abuse and all of those things. Mm -hmm. So that when I wrote the book, it it really would attract young people Mm -hmm. to this because it was what's out in the culture. Mm -hmm. But I kept the Lord quiet till the middle of the book when they were already into the story. Mm -hmm. And so the book is actually written in a way to teach young people by listening to real life stories written in fiction format. Wow. Mm-hmm. So if somebody wanted to get this book, where were they? Amazon, get Amazon, Barnes and Noble. Yeah. All right. Well, yeah. I'll have in the show notes also, if you okay. guys want to, um, to get this yeah. book, it sounds great. Listen, if you're living and you're on this earth, you are going to experience spiritual warfare. Yes. So if you have a teenager, maybe even you yourself, you need to get this book yeah. and read it. And I really want to get it too. Okay. I need to get that book. I've and got read one. It. I'll get it. Yep. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> I can't wait to get it. Um, But today we're going to talk a little bit about um, Angela's life and what she has gone through and the spiritual warfare, even navigating through grief. Yeah. Yes. Grief. And, you know, I looked up the word grief in Hebrew and what it means is a deep inner piercing. Yes. And you remember where it says that the word says that Jesus bore all of our grief yeah. And our sorrow. So not only was Jesus pierced in his side, he was pierced in his heart. The agony. The agony, the grief. Yeah. He experienced the deep inner piercing of grief and sorrow. So as you are navigating through stuff, 
and you're going through pain and suffering and sorrow and grief, you have to know that Jesus knows how you feel because he bore all of that. He experienced that. And he gave us the Holy Spirit to bring comfort. Yes. So as we are navigating through life, we have the Holy Spirit to bring comfort to us. And that's why I'm so inspired by your life. I see how, you know, you've experienced a lot of loss, Mm -hmm. but yet the Holy Spirit has given you peace. I don't think I would be even in the place I'm in after 11 months of losing my husband Mm -hmm. and be where I am today. Mm -hmm. It is a peace that really does surpass all understanding. I can't explain it. Mm -hmm. So you were married for 31 years Mm -hmm. to Bruce. Mm -hmm. And uh, you lost him. You said your grief process started in 2011. So I want you to just go ahead and just tell us about your story. <laughs> tell us how it all began and where you are now and where you feel like God is about to take I you. I met him in 1989 mm-hmm. and uh, was just blown away. The lovely, beautiful, very respectful, genteel man. Mm-hmm. And we got married and uh, in 1990. And I really didn't know the man. Mm-hmm. And neither one of us knew the Lord. Mm-hmm. So you've got these two pagans that have come together. Mm-hmm. And with both of our backgrounds, we're going to get married and have a good marriage, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> uh-uh. Yeah. No, it just didn't work that way. Yeah, yeah. And from the very beginning, two weeks into the marriage, there was trouble started. Mm-hmm. And um, I can remember we had a big fight. And I remember walking in the bedroom and he was out someplace walking and I didn't know the Lord, Mm -hmm. but I I instinctively looked up to the ceiling and said, okay, if you think you can do better, you've got it. Mm -hmm. If you think you can make the situation better, I'll give it all to you. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what I was saying. Mm -hmm. I didn't, I finally met him uh, in 1994, Mm -hmm. Um, but it was, I was in an embryonic state for years Mm -hmm. and years and years and years. And so we moved back to Savannah in 2003. And uh, in 2011, he began getting sick. And we had always had a very wonderful social life, but Mm -hmm. our marriage was always on the surface Mm -hmm. because he had a problem with connecting affectionately. He Mm -hmm. just couldn't do it. And that's for a whole nother program, Mm -hmm. but he had a problem with pornography. And so it put a barrier between the relationship, Mm -hmm. but everything was always on the surface. We had a great social life. Mm -hmm. We went to church together. Yeah. We, uh, we, uh, loved the same things. We played cards. We loved to camp. Mm -hmm. We loved good food. We loved entertaining people. So everything was safe to keep it at a service level, Mm -hmm. but underneath we were both dying. Mm -hmm. We were shriveling up and dying. And we had a traditional marriage. I took care of the home and and uh, I actually took care of the yard. I did most everything, but mm-hmm. he worked and I worked in and out. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, but when he began to have seizures in 2011, everything changed mm-hmm. because at first he couldn't even remember his children's names. Wow. I had to after he would have a seizure, I would have to coax him mm-hmm back into remembering his names and feeding it back in. And then things started to change. Mm -hmm. He couldn't drive for a year and a half. So you get used to someone Mm -hmm. taking care of things and now everything is on you. Yeah. And so one of the traumas I didn't face when Bruce passed was I had been taking care of everything since 2011. Wow. I did the cars, the finances, the yard. Did you feel overwhelmed, do you think? Uh, there was a period of my life that I thought I was sinking. It was around 2012 mm-hmm. when I was writing Marcus. I was taking care of my elderly parents, which lived five minutes away. My neighbor next door, her husband walked out of her, and she had a Down syndrome child and a little eight-year-old boy. I was surrogate grandmother for that. Mm-hmm. I was driving round trip to church one hour each way three times a week Mm. i had ministry i was working on my phd and writing this book and doing all of this stuff plus taking care of my husband in the house oh my gosh and so (laughs) but i love jesus and it didn't i don't really know how to put this in world it was overwhelming yeah but i didn't feel like i was sinking Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you took all of your energy and all of the pain that you had in your heart and just sort of focus it on other things and just Oh yeah, that's this? easy to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's just go do things and I'm not gonna I'm gonna ignore what's in my heart mm-hmm. right now. And that happens so yeah. much. Like, you know, that people don't deal with what's going on 
on the inside. Right. So let me get busy. Let me work for God. Let me do what I can mm-hmm. for other people and forget yes. about myself. Yes. And then things begin to surface the older we get. Yeah, they do. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I kept myself very, very, very busy, but there was a side effect that I couldn't sleep. Mm. Sleeping was a an issue for me. Mm-hmm. And so I began taking an over-the-counter sleep aid, which that helped, mm-hmm. but it didn't necessarily help all the time. Mm-hmm. And then in the last couple of years of Bruce's life, he would sleep during the day mm-hmm. and be up at night. Well, I had stuff I had to do during the day, so I was up at night and during the day. Oh, goodness. And so for several years, I didn't get much sleep. Mm-hmm. And then after he passed, I was, if I got an hour and a half of sleep a night, that was, I was doing really well. Oh, my God. So through all those years, mm-hmm. I didn't really take good care of myself. I didn't mm-hmm. focus on Angela. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I felt like that you'd be strong. Mm-hmm. My father always taught me. He, I had six brother, five brothers and sisters in, in nine years, and we worked in the family business. Mm-hmm. And he said, you know, marriage is not 50-50. There's no such thing as 50-50 in marriage. That's he right. said, sometimes you give 150%, but you do the work. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You do the work. And so that was built into me mm-hmm. all of my life. Mm-hmm. And I watched a father take care of my mother, who was an alcoholic and was mm-hmm. very, very ill. And I watched him. Mm-hmm. He never wavered in anything. Wow. Ever. And I took on that persona of how my father did things. Mm. And my, so you became that. I became that. My father was um, stable mm-hmm. and dependable mm-hmm. and loving and not boisterous. And I used to think, Daddy, you need to put her in her place. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the household would have been a little bit more balanced. Mm-hmm. But regardless of that, he was he was an absolute, he was a wonderful father. Mm-hmm. And so it it helped balance out the deficiency of mama. Mm-hmm. But she had her life too. Mm-hmm. She was just as broken as the rest of us was. And if yeah. we realize that as we get older, people are they're just broken, whether you're a parent or your brother or your friend, mm-hmm. we're all broken. I'm so glad you brought that up because I want all our listeners to hear today is that we're all broken people. We're not functioning functioning well. And we won't function well without the power of the Holy Spirit at work Mm -hmm. in our life, Mm -hmm. too. And he helps us navigate through pain. He helps us navigate through the hard times of life. And um, especially during this pandemic right now, we've just seen so much brokenness, so much loss. And your loss began before the pandemic so i can only imagine like and for all of you guys out there that are listening maybe you had you lost a husband or you lost a wife or you lost your health or you lost a job whatever it was that you you had that loss before the pandemic and then you come into it i can imagine that it 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 creates um emotions where it's just too much it's overwhelming it and you don't know how you feel like you're drowning. You're in the middle of the ocean with two little floaties on mm-hmm. and the waves are overtaking yeah. you. And, you know, I know that that can be very difficult. First of all, we want to acknowledge every person that has walked through the journey of grief. The church has been so good about being there for funerals. Right. For people. Right. Right. And, but I don't think they know how to navigate the pre-funeral, like when a person has grieved the process of of a a spouse, you've already lost them before they actually die because you are walking with, you know, you were a, what a health giver, right? Right. You you took care of him. I I was a caregiver. Caregiver, yes. Yes. So you walk through that, but then after he's gone, you're still walking through stuff. And I think for many years, we have seen this even in the church, that the church says, we're just going to pray for you. Nobody dealt with it. No. And that's one reason why we started Grief Share in our church is because we wanted to help people navigate through grief afterwards, you know, because it is a journey. And after losing both of my parents in one decade... I was like, I thought I was dying because things begin to surface and death has a way of doing that. It causes things, things that you have pent up inside of you. It's going to all come up. The first, 
lost my grandparents. Uh, that's a different category for me at my age. But the first loss I had was in 2003 when I was living in California. We, when I came back, my best friend was um, a lady that was 40 years older than I was. And uh, she was kind of like my surrogate mom. Mm. And I came back and she had colon cancer and she died. Mm. And I I didn't go to the funeral. I, I needed to get back to Savannah. Mm. And that's a whole nother ball game. I don't even think I really even dealt with that. I just kind of shoved it down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then my mother passed in 14 and my father passed in 17. And it just, it brought up my friend's passing from 2004 because mm -hmm. I had never really dealt with that. And then last year, May 18th, a very good friend of mine, uh, medical malpractice, died. And then Bruce passed on the 24th. And then my best wow. friend that I've been in ministry, Steve Evans, it was Healing Streams Ministry in Savannah. You knew Steve yes, Evans. Yes, I did. We had known Very each other for friend. 19 years. We had done ministry. I was, I was on staff with him. And mm -hmm. we, and he passed because of medical malpractice, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. And uh, so all of that back to back. And I still didn't address the grief. Mm. It wasn't till April 18th of this year mm -hmm. that it hit me. Mm -hmm. And it hit me through a conversation with a friend. And he said, you have to forgive your husband. Mm -hmm. If you don't forgive your husband, you can't move forward. Wow. Because that was what was really holding me back. Mm -hmm. And I hung the phone up and I got down on the floor and I cried and I cried and I cried and I cried for hours. And I looked at the Lord and I said, okay, mm. I let it go. The amazing thing about letting that go mm. is anger and unforgiveness cloud perception. Mm -hmm. You can't see what really truly happened mm. in 31 years because you lived in anger and unforgiveness for all those years. Mm. And as I sat on that floor sobbing, it was like God lifted the blinders mm. and I saw this movie, this and fast forward motion of all the years with him. And then I began to see, because I used to say to him for years and years, you don't love me. There's no way you can love me. Mm -hmm. You don't touch me. There's no communication. You can't love me. And I would always see this really grieved look on his face. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I do love you. And then as I went through this mini motion picture, I began to see his love language, mm -hmm. which was giving gifts, mm -hmm. which was compliments, mm -hmm. which was spending time. Mm -hmm. Mine was touch. Mm -hmm. And so if you can't show me that kind of affection, mm -hmm. you can't love me. Wow. We base our we base the relationship on how we give love, we perceive love. Mm -hmm. And if that's not returned in that way, mm -hmm. then you don't think that person loves you. It's like um, I learned this in grief share. Yeah. It's like you, we have the perception of we look at life through a mirror right? instead of a window. That's exactly true. So we think that people should be just like us. Like, I want you to be just like me and to, you know, uh, well, and we love want, me like I would love me. But we don't like ourselves. So why do we want somebody to be just like us when we don't like ourselves? So that's just kind yeah. of insanity. But like, we're yeah. like, well, I would have not, never done that. So it's hard to understand another yeah. person because we're looking at life through a mirror instead yes. of a window. Yes. And when you take that mirror down and you begin to look at people yeah. through a window, you can actually see through the eyes of heaven. Yes. You see clearer heaven's perspective, heaven's perspective, because you want to see through his eyes and not our own, mm -hmm. because we're all flawed. You yes, guys, every one of us, yes, we're, flawed. we're flawed and it takes practice doing that, too. You it have does. to be intentional about it, yes, about yeah. going, OK, I'm going to move out of the way. I'm going to move the mirror. I'm going to ask you, Holy Spirit, show me how to look through this window. Let me see you at work. It changes everything. It developed more compassion in me. Yes. More empathy. Mm -hmm. Because as I began to look at this movie, I began to realize just how broken my husband was. Mm -hmm. I pet him on such a pedestal because he was such a sweet, intelligent, funny man. Mm -hmm. And um, I began to really honestly take a look at how much you really wanted to love me, mm -hmm. but didn't know how to connect. 
because of the woundings in his life. Mm-hmm. Um, his father sexually molested his sister from the time she was five till she was 17. Wow. So he had that sexual perversion in his house and he had all this other stuff coming at him mm-hmm. that it made me angry mm-hmm. at the right person and that was the enemy because he stole this man's life. Yeah. And I believe that he ultimately prematurely killed this man, mm-hmm. killed him mm-hmm. because of all of the deprivation my husband was going through and the guilt that he lived with and the shame that he lived with. It was really heartbroken. But in that moment on April 18th, it was a release because then I was able to grieve the loss. Mm-hmm. And it was more of a loss of what had never been and yeah. what could have been. Because mm. I can sit here honestly and say that I didn't really lose the love of my life. Mm-hmm. But the wonderful thing about not quitting and not giving up mm-hmm. is I was able to learn how to love him from an agape standpoint. Mm. I was able to you know, look at him and love him and take care of him because mm-hmm. he had, he passed with dementia, and so I took care of him for a while, mm-hmm. and it was very physically demanding because he was two hundred pounds. I'm I, I'm a woman. I can mm-hmm. I had to lift that weight sometimes. Yeah, yeah. And I, as I sat beside his bed the week that he was passing, and was talking, and then he passed, mm-hmm. and the first thing I looked to the Lord was, and I felt it was I finished well Mm. and that was really important that i didn't give up and that i was able to take care of him in a way that honored him Mm -hmm. and honored the lord wow yeah that's powerful yeah yeah that is so powerful and i think it comes from even the scripture you share with me in james about submitting submitting to the lord resist the devil and he will flee yeah and through that submission i i was able to, because he gave me a mandate in 2016 Mm -hmm. that I was to implement peace, patience, and forgiveness in my life, and I was to love my husband again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. (laughs) I remember when he said that to me, I went, well, good luck with that. Mm -hmm. I've been trying to do that. I can't. And it was, no, I'm going to teach you a different kind of love. Mm -hmm. And so I believe you can love someone, even though you've been damaged, and he was a lot older than I was, um, and not be in love with that person. You can be kind to that person and not be that love between a husband and wife, but a different level of love, Mm -hmm. especially as you get older, things do change. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I felt at peace Mm -hmm. sitting on that floor Mm -hmm. on April 18th. Mm -hmm. And God showed me, you did finish well. Mm -hmm. You did treat him with respect. Mm -hmm. And with kindness and honor and honor and gentleness. And that's what I hold on to now. Yeah. While I'm now in this grieving stage that I didn't do the first six months mm-hmm. that he passed. Mm-hmm. And um and because of that, I've learned I am learning to give myself grace that it's okay that I'm not perfect. Oh yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> because nobody's, nobody's perfect. And oh, we gosh. think we, we think we strive for that kind of perfection mm. and that's really debilitating to your growth, to your spiritual growth. It's debilitating to your relationships. Mm -hmm. It's debilitating to everything that you try to do in life because you're never going to achieve perfection. Not only are we not perfect, but the Bible says we're not even good. No. So when we think about that, we're without Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit in our life. We can't even be good. No, we can't. But in First Timothy, it says, you know, Paul is praying over the church and he said, I pray that you will be um, whole in right. spirit, soul, and body, right. and until and that the power of the Holy Spirit will keep you perfect mm-hmm. until the day that Jesus Christ comes. Okay. So what that means is you, you're not going to be perfect in life. You're not even going to be good, but you can be healthy. Yeah. You can you can be healthy. You can be healthy in your spirit. You can be healthy in your soul and you can be healthy in your body. And the Holy Spirit wants to work in all three areas of your life. He wants to work in your health, your body, the health of your spirit and the health of your soul. And he wants to heal our soul. And I'm going to tell you grief. When you are experiencing grief, 
it's it's a, an overwhelming feeling and so many emotions mm-hmm. and sometimes it feels like a ball of yarn and that it's all just tangled up and you can't unravel it and you you have they say the stages of grief are first denial anger depression bargaining and then acceptance mm-hmm. right yes <laughs> but then it, it but it's all tangled <laughs> in there you know we want to clinically lay out this stage comes first this yeah. stage, that does not the way it works uh-uh. it isn't because it we're not machines we're not we really aren't clinical we're mm-hmm. we're we're made in the image and lights of god and he's fluid yeah you know light is what he is and light is ever moving and he's mm-hmm. fluid and and we don't give ourselves a break and saying I'm human, mm-hmm. and that I don't have to follow an outline that that because it's not going to happen anyway. Mm-hmm. It's it's not going to happen. And mm. I thought that I would just work on this and mm-hmm. then push it aside and move to something, else, move to something else. Because I'm kind of like that. You mm-hmm. you have a task, you do it, you work mm-hmm. through it. That's completed. You move to the next section you mm-hmm. have to do, and. I found myself riding down the road and mm-hmm. falling apart, and there was no thought of him. Mm-hmm. It just, I had to pull over. Mm-hmm. Um, I found myself uh, two nights ago laying in the bed, and it was quiet. I had finished reading the Word and mm-hmm. and just started sobbing for this overwhelming mm-hmm. feeling of isolation. Mm-hmm. And it was just, where did that come from? Well, mm-hmm. it comes from the enemy, but it's also very real that we're walking it too. Yeah. And it does, it has to do with spiritual warfare, but it's going to hit because you, yeah. you can't, you can't diagnose this. You can't explain this. Mm-hmm. Uh, prior to him passing, I never used a calendar. Mm-hmm. I, I had like a steel memory trap. I could remember everything. Mm-hmm. And the day he passed, people started talking to me. And they would look at me and talk, and they turn around and walk away, and I had no clue. I had no clue what they even said to me. Yeah. And so there's no calendars, there's no remembering dates. I'll even write it down, and I'll lose things, and I'm mm-hmm. very organized, mm-hmm. and things are not organized in my life. And I, mm-hmm. I finally had to stop and say, Angela, take a breath. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's okay mm-hmm. because it's changed. Yeah. I might whole identity over one night went from being a wife to now no longer being a wife Mm. and it's hard that i've always said i've been given the gift of being a wife Mm -hmm. because i loved it i'm a Mm -hmm. caregiver and Mm -hmm. i love to take care of people and i took a lot of enjoyment in taking care of a home and and it, it not the only identity I have is in Jesus, but those are the things that I enjoy oh, doing. Yeah. I enjoy counseling and taking yeah. care of people, and mm-hmm. and I guess one of the hardest parts now is that I don't have him to take care of at night mm-hmm. when it was so tough and so physically demanding, and I felt so isolated mm-hmm. and so alone, and there was nobody to help me at three o'clock in the morning to get him up off the floor, mm-hmm. and I'm all by myself. But is that's what I miss. Yeah. The thing that was the hardest is what I miss the most. Did you find you, you felt like you felt your purpose in that? Like it was I don't know if it was my purpose, but it becomes so much of my identity of uh-huh. who I was. I took care of him like you take care of a child. Yeah. So um but towards the end, the last time I went someplace by myself was the last time I could leave him. Yeah, and that's because I came home and the house was just full of gas. Mm-hmm. He had turned the stove on, mm-hmm. well, then I had to take all the knobs off the stove. There's so mm-hmm. much that goes into caregiving for somebody, depending upon the level of fluidity they have or, or how conscious they are. Mm-hmm. And um, but even in all of that mix, because prior to Bruce passing, I was in the Word, mm-hmm. praise and worship, meditation, declaration communion, Mm -hmm. prayer, for two and a half hours every morning. Mm -hmm. It was what sustained me. Mm -hmm. It was what helped me move from day to day Mm -hmm. without dwelling on Angela. I took my eyes off of Angela and I put them on him. Mm -hmm. And when that all went away, the Mm -hmm. thing I didn't want to do 
was a thing now I want to do. Yeah. And it's very confusing because that's not logical at all. And I'm a very pragmatic, logical mm-hmm. individual. And this is it's very confusing to be that, mm-hmm. to lose the thing you didn't want and now you want it back. Mm-hmm. And I can't explain that one. Wow. That I cannot explain that. And because the marriage really did have a lot of turmoil all through those years and there were so many misunderstandings between the two of us, mm. uh it was when he did pass, it was like there was a relief that took place. Yeah. But then I missed him, but then I didn't want him back either. Mm-hmm. So now you've got all of these conflicting situations situations going on and I had one girlfriend that I used to talk with a lot who'd never been married Mm -hmm. and because of what I talked about before Mm -hmm. she felt like I should have still been able to follow through with that not understanding that everything had changed interesting yeah everything changed it shifted whether you're in love with that person or not Mm -hmm. the grief doesn't designate because you love this person you feel this way Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. or because you're not desperately in love with that person you're supposed to feel this way Mm -hmm. there is no format Mm -hmm. of how you walk this out or how you feel yeah it it, it's completely different than i ever thought it was going to be yes and grief is so it's like the ocean i learned this in grief show too it's like the ocean it's so unpredictable (laughs) you don't know what it's going to do you know sometimes the ocean is calm And it feels great to be out there looking at the ocean. But when a tsunami comes, you guys, you don't want to be near the ocean. You don't. don't. And it will pull you under. And sometimes that's what grief is. And I want to talk about that a second. The tsunami of grief, the the pulling under the undertoes, because I think that that grief has a place of getting us stuck Mm -hmm. in the bargaining Mm -hmm. level of guilt shame what if i had done this who am i now and all of these thoughts begin to to crowd our mind right so what would you say to i mean maybe you can even tell us what you've done if you feel like you've had a tsunami of grief how did you come out of that uh by talking about it okay so that's what's worked for me um because in the beginning i just ignored everything Mm-hmm. I went and traveled out to denial. I, that's exactly. <laughs> I ignored everything. I had a few crying moments, but mm-hmm. it wasn't. I didn't. I wasn't going to let myself be devastated. Okay, we've gotten through this, Angela. We're going to put this over here. It's time now. You've done this for all these years. It's time to now redefine who you are, and uh, that didn't work. And I would find myself when I would. I, I remember. It was probably back in February. I was in the grocery store and I broke down. Mm -hmm. I couldn't walk. I couldn't breathe. I found some crates that I could sit on and I was sobbing. And uh, not one person walked up to me. Mm -hmm. And this whole place was busy. And not that I expect that, but if it had been me walking up, somebody saw me, I'd have gone and put my arms around me. Hey, are you okay? But the the isolation Mm -hmm. with the Mm -hmm. explosive emotion that I couldn't explain because I hadn't been thinking about him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was all of a sudden like I'd been sucked down into this tube Mm -hmm. and I'm trying to swim up to catch my breath and I can't catch my breath. Mm -hmm. I can't catch my breath. Mm. And then I then I would say, well, I don't really know who I am anymore. Mm-hmm. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I would go further down in the pit. But I, I believe that what has changed things around for me is that April 18th, mm-hmm. when the Lord got a hold of me and he said through this friend, you need to forgive this Angela. Yes. And when that happened, mm-hmm. the anger went away. Mm-hmm. I've had probably one or two little bouts of regret, Mm -hmm. but I've taken them to the Lord immediately. Mm -hmm. But the anger went away. And when the anger went away, I was able to clearly be Mm -hmm. okay Mm -hmm. with crying Mm -hmm. about Him Mm -hmm. and crying about the loss of what was, Mm -hmm. what wasn't. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but it's, um, I I had to pull over several times in the last several months driving because Mm -hmm. I couldn't see to drive Wow! because I was crying so much. And uh, and it 
losing my friend Steve is really what made this grief process harder because he was the only person that I knew that understood. Mm -hmm. And the best thing about Steve was as much as he loved to talk and teach mm -hmm. is he knew what not to say. Well, let me, let me just tell our listeners yeah. a, a little bit about Steve. He, he had a ministry called Healing Streams. And I went through healing yeah. streams and he specialized in inner healing and mm -hmm. he understood people's emotions and he helped people see Jesus in the middle of all of those yeah. emotions, in the middle of the tsunami, in the middle yeah. of abuse, in the middle of brokenness, in the middle of your husband being addicted to pornography. Yeah. Try to see Jesus somewhere in this, and He's going to help you navigate through life. So, when you lost your friend, you lost your uh, the confidant. Your someone confidant that really walked ahead of me yes. and explained some things to me. Yes, the person that was leading yeah. you through yeah. healing. Mm -hmm. So then now you feel like you're standing alone and right. then grief, it does, it just hits you. It ambushes you. It comes out of nowhere. Right. Like everything's fine, you think, and then all of a sudden it hits you and you feel like you're dying in it. You do. You feel like you can't breathe. Mm -hmm. There's nausea that goes with that. There's headaches that go with that. There's mm -hmm. uh, insomnia that goes with it. But I, what he did for me one night was mm -hmm. valuable. I was home alone and I felt like I was sinking and I called him and he was at a restaurant with some friends in North Carolina. Mm -hmm. And he said, hold on a second. He left the friends and went outside and I listened. he listened to me and he said, here's what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. I want you to go get a chair mm -hmm. and I want you to put it beside the bed. And I want you to invite Jesus and sit in that chair with you. And mm -hmm. I want you to unload on him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Tell him everything you're feeling and thinking because I couldn't sleep. And I was, ha I was now getting into trouble because of the lack of sleep, sleep deprivation will... Mm -hmm. You will start hallucinating. You, yeah. it's, it's very unhealthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I said, okay. Mm -hmm. So I did exactly what he did. And mm -hmm. within probably 10 minutes, I was asleep. And that's awesome. Yes. And I still use those people. When people want to come in my office and pray with me, the things that Steve did with me, mm -hmm. I still use those mm -hmm. on people. And immediately they feel relief. As soon as you can see Jesus yeah. in the middle of your uh, torment, yeah. in the middle of your pain and your grief, I promise you, you guys, if you can just take a moment, close your eyes yes. and imagine him there with you, it's going to make the biggest difference in the world and unload, tell him everything, right. cast all your cares. And he said, I'll give you beauty for ashes. That's right. And the word says that he's near to the brokenhearted. He is very close to us. And another thing, I'm just going to go back to grief share because that's always been right. so powerful. The same wave that took you under will be the same wave, wave that brings take. you yes. back up. Yes. And so if you fight that wave and you're going under and you're fighting it, that's where we drown. When there is an undertow, they always say that if you fight that undertow, it's going to take you under, it's going to take you under deeper. Yeah. But if you just give into it, it will bring you right back up. Yeah. And that's what you have to do when the waves of life hit you. You just give into it knowing that the Holy Spirit is in it. He's moving. Mm -hmm. He is in the middle. He's promised to never leave us. You know, we're made in the image and likeness of God. Yes. If you take that word image, mm -hmm. we build images in our mind. Mm -hmm. We can see ourselves sinking. Yes. Or we can see ourselves coming out of the hole. Mm -hmm. And I know for me, you hear the word visualization. Sometimes that's maybe a new age mm -hmm. slant to it. Mm -hmm. But if I'm if I'm closing my eyes... And I'm praying and I'm sitting there saying, Lord, show me. He's going to show you. Mm -hmm. He's going to show you in your mind's eye, in your, your really your heart, because it it's a matter of the heart. Mm -hmm. He's going to show you in your heart exactly where you need to be with Him. Mm -hmm. And He will bring in a peace that surpasses all understanding. Because mm -hmm. at that moment on April 18th, when I broke down and I, I was obedient, I submitted to the Lord. Mm -hmm. And I allowed him to, t he literally took that from me. And there came a, a peace that settled in my room, mm -hmm. which was the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And I could cry without it being agonizing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's a gut-wrenching, agonizing cry that I've done many, many times since Bruce passed. Mm -hmm. But then that's being 
replaced mm -hmm. with the way God wants me to mourn. Because mm -hmm. there's a godly way to mourn. There's a godly grief, and then there's an ungodly grief. Yes, that's and true. With Him in the center of everything. Mm -hmm. You know, when I'm counseling, I, I think I told you this earlier that I draw two circles. Mm -hmm. Okay. And in one circle, I pie it. You got like a pie, and you put education, family, recreation, mm -hmm. you put uh, uh, God. Mm -hmm. All of those things. But in the other pie, I put a circle in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. And I put God in the middle. And then you then you pie the rest of the pie. Mm -hmm. If God is in the middle, middle of all of that, he filters into every piece of mm -hmm. those. But if you've got him stuck over here in one one wedge, mm -hmm. he right. can't get to the rest of those pieces. That's right. The, the, the opening down there That's is too right. small. That's right. So by understanding that mm -hmm. <clears throat> He will never leave me, nor he will never forsake me. Mm -hmm. And here's the here's the tough part. Somebody who's been a counselor and someone had a very, very uh, dedicated, what I call altar time with the Lord every morning with communion and all that I did. When he passed, I couldn't even open up the Bible. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you want to talk about the enemy beating you up? Mm -hmm. What do you mean you can't open up the Bible? You're a Christian counselor. <laughs> you spent all these hours every day with yes. him. And now you've abandoned him because you've lost your husband. What mm -hmm. kind of a person are you? What kind of a believer in Jesus are you really? Did you ever really believe in him at all? Mm -hmm. And it was unbelievable, the spiritual warfare that came. Yeah. And it's taken me months. So what I, what I did to start back was I just put praise and worship music on. Mm -hmm. Just listening to it when I couldn't speak, when I couldn't quit crying, when I didn't feel like I was breathing, when I didn't feel like I could think, I could put his music on. Mm -hmm. I could put his words on. Mm -hmm. High praise of who he is. Yeah. High praise. Yeah. Not the songs that we hear about, oh, Lord, fix me. You know, I, I need to be rescued from here. Mm -hmm. It was taking my eyes completely off myself mm -hmm. and focusing on him. Mm -hmm. Because when I do that, he's the one that gets the glory, not me. Mm -hmm. If I'm doing all of this work to try to get better, I've taken the glory off the Lord and now I've put, shown it on mm -hmm. me. And it doesn't work that way. Mm -hmm. But when I take and I center myself in Jesus and I say, okay, I know where I am. I know what I'm feeling. But this is what your word says to me. All things are possible. Yes. For yes. those who believe. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I said, I can't walk this way. I cannot do this myself, but you can do this. Yeah. And I know when I had that conversation with Jesus after Steve taught me what to do, the peace of the Lord just flood my bedroom. Mm -hmm. He is He is real. Mm -hmm. This is not something we just read on a piece of paper. This is not something that we're just taught in Sunday school. Yeah. He lives today. Yeah. He that is in me is greater than he that is in the world. That's right. That's right. And he lives in us. And it's whether we choose to give him free reign, mm -hmm. we can tie his hands mm -hmm. or we we take those mm -hmm. binds off of his hands and let him do what he, mm -hmm. he only he can do in us. That's right. And he's the only one that can do We can't do it. Mm -hmm. I can't do that. You know, what's coming to my heart right now, Angela, is I feel like the Lord is saying there is an end to this grief. Yes. Yes. And there is going to come a time where the Lord will shut the pages of this book, of the mm -hmm. story that he's writing. Mm -hmm. This book will still be a part of your life. Right. But God has plans. There's more plans. There's more things that have not been done yet that He has already written them out for your life. So what I'm seeing in the Spirit is that it's not just even a new chapter. It's a whole new volume. Yeah, it is. And I think what we do when we have a loss or, or we have a hard several decades that we're going through, we get angry about those. But if we say all things work together for good for those who are the called according to his purpose, mm -hmm. then I have to look back on all these years where I was angry and I felt like I was stolen from and I was frustrated. Mm -hmm. I had to honestly admit, I am the woman I am today because of my husband. Mm -hmm. and, and it drove me to him and not away that's from That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. And 
I like Angela now. Mm -hmm. I didn't used to like me for a long time. Mm -hmm. And so I have to thank my husband for that mm -hmm. and be grateful that God used him to do a work in my life that could have not been done mm -hmm. any other way. Mm -hmm. It's like we have to accept the storyline of our life. Mm -hmm. And everybody has a part of their storyline that they yeah. really are not fond of. Like for my son, <laughs> he's been sick since he was 12 years yes. old. And if you guys have been following us, you know that what you know he's been through and he had to have his colon removed. Right. And he said something to me because I, I interviewed him not too long ago. And I said, well, how are you getting through all this? And he said, well, I just accepted that this is my story. And it, I can't fight it anymore. I no. can't fight. I can't wish it away. I can't wish that it didn't happen. You know, I can't cry it away. It's just there. It's happened. And I have to embrace the storyline of my life and find victory in it somewhere. It's like trying to swim against the current. Yes. When you're not going to change the direction of that current, mm -hmm. no matter what, no matter how many floaters you have on the paddles, mm -hmm. you're not going to change that. And if we could just look at all of the situations that we go through in life as a gift from the Lord, that He is like a potter mm -hmm. with that clay sitting on that table. And he is molding mm -hmm. every aspect of our lives because it could not have got accomplished any other way. Mm -hmm. But that way, I had to go through those years mm -hmm. to understand who I truly was in the Lord. I had to go through the, all of the pain and the anguish, the separation, the loneliness. Can you imagine what Jesus must have felt like on the cross? He was all alone. Everybody had deserted him mm -hmm. except his mother, John, everybody had gone, and he yeah. was all alone up there. Mm. But look what God did as a result of that yeah. crucifixion. He saved all of us. Mm -hmm. We would not be where we are today mm -hmm. had it not been for that, had it not been through the agony that he walked through. Mm -hmm. I am the woman I am today. You are the woman you are today because of the agony. The, the pain, losses, the, loss, the pain, yeah. the victories, mm -hmm. the good things, the, the difficult things. Mm -hmm. And I I can honestly say, if the Lord looked at me and said, if you had to go back and do it all again to become who you are today, I would take it and I would take it over again. Yes. Because Same. I've got a treasure chest of life experiences mm -hmm. and understanding and wisdom that I would never had if I'd had a marriage where my husband was not into what he was into mm -hmm. and he had the same love language and understood that and it was all just easy mm -hmm. and I had I, I I would not have the depth of understanding that I have today. And I remember when I was in California, Johnny Erickson Tata had was coming to the church that I was at, and she was speaking one day. And for those who don't know Johnny, she was uh, uh, 17 years old. She jumped off a swimming platform and broke her neck and became a paraplegic. Wow. She is a paint-by-mouth artist, world-renowned. She has a international wheelchair ministry. She's incredible. Wow. All of that made Johnny who she is today. Mm. And so all of that that I went through with Bruce... I'm excited because I'm in a position now where I have got a lot of different avenues opening up and then God can use this. She made the statement, God will take that, whatever your that is, mm -hmm. and use it for his good if, mm -hmm. two little letters, we will let him. Yeah. And so I say all the pain, all the frustration, all the loneliness, all the anger, all of that that I went through, I put in this box over here in the corner. Mm -hmm. And I leave it over there and I say, Lord, you've got now the stuff that's left over. Mm -hmm. You take and run with it and do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. I will go wherever you want me to go. I will do whatever you want me mm -hmm. to do. And the greatest satisfaction in this life, other than being in Jesus, is knowing that you made a difference in another human being's life. Amen. That's so true. All the, all the cars that you can get, mm -hmm. <laughs> Whatever you have in this life, material, family, whatever, none of that carries the weight mm -hmm. of somebody walking up to you and saying, thank you, mm -hmm. because 
you, through Jesus, made a difference. Made a difference. That's what this podcast is all about, too. One voice making a difference yes. and using our voice to make a difference yes. in other people's lives. And yes. I promise you, when you begin to do that, you share your story. Yes. And I want you to practice saying this to yourself over and over in your mind. I have been made more than a conqueror. I mm-hmm. am victorious in mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. Keep saying that over and over. I have been made more than than a conqueror. I am victorious in Jesus Christ. And because he rose from the dead, he said the same resurrection power that raised him from the dead now lives inside of us. And Angela, I feel like maybe today there's someone that is listening in. They're stuck in grief Mm -hmm. and they're in a pit and they can't get out. Mm -hmm. Will you pray for them? Pray for that Mm. that man or that woman or that teenager that is stuck and they can't get out and they need they need deliverance today. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of your son Jesus. And we stand on what your word says that you will never leave us and you will never forsake us. Mm. And we're so concentrated on our feelings, Mm. the emotions that we lose sight of of you as the foundation that we walk on. Mm, Yes, Lord. Father, for whoever's listening today that feels like they're sinking and they can't breathe, if you can't do anything but just call on the name of Jesus. Yes, Jesus. If you can't pray, you get on your knees. Father, Mm. prompt them to get on their knees and ask the Holy Spirit to make those Mm. utterances for you that you cannot make. Mm. But I give you this promise, and the Father gives you this promise. Nothing ever stays Mm. the same. But you have to partner with the Father. Mm. And that partnership may be just as simple as Jesus. Mm. Jesus, rescue me. Yes. And start there. Yes, Jesus. And when you're in those dark moments and you do not feel that there's anyone for you there, I ask you to sit on that bed. Let the Lord lead you and pull up a chair. And Father, show them how to call upon your name Mm. and just speak with the one who knows you better than you know Mm. yourself. And he will be there for you. He will walk you out of where you walk. This is not forever. He is forever. He is there walking with you and carrying you when you do not feel like you can. He will never leave you. He has you in the palm of his hand, and he will never let you go. You are not alone. You are not alone. He has you in his arms. Use the image maker that he gave you and see him. See that the love that he has for you is never ending. Let him touch you. Let him speak to you. Let him hold you. Give that to him and he will turn your life around. Yes. I pray that in the blessed, glorious name of Jesus. Yes, yes. Amen. 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 Oh, I can feel the Holy Spirit. I really can. Thank you, Angela. You're welcome. For telling your beautiful, broken story. (laughs) And by the way, we all have a beautiful, broken story. And again, I just want to remind you that this is not the end, but it's the end of this volume of that book that God has a whole nother volume written for you. And there is hope for your future. And there is a new thing that God is doing. And I love what the word says. It says, now forget about the old things. Forget about the things of the past. Behold, I'm going to build you. I'm going to rebuild you. I'm going to construct and reconstruct and do a brand new thing in your life. And the brand new thing he's doing is not repeating of the old. No. It's something new. It's been replaced. Exactly. So when he does a new thing, we have to leave some things behind in order to go forward. And I pray today that you will find what that is that you need to leave behind 
so that you can go forward. And I pray that your voice now will be powerful, that you will um, receive this word, this testimony, and you would use your voice now to encourage someone else. If you see somebody crying at Walmart, go up to them and say, hey, can I pray for you? I do that in the bathroom all the time. <laughs> I, know. I see people, I know. And, you know, I'm like, oh, this, I'm just drawn yeah. to them, you know. Yeah. So let's, let's use our voice and let's share the gospel together and let's share the story of hope and restoration. Mm-hmm. Amen. Love you guys. We'll see Love you next you. week. Bless. Okay. Bye. Thank you for listening to One Voice Makes a Difference. If you enjoyed today's episode, please consider subscribing and reviewing the show on iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. Tell your friends about One Voice too. Your voice helps the show reach more people and to spread the gospel. If you'd like to hear more about my personal story, you can purchase my book, One Voice, on my website, www.janetswanson.org, or on Amazon and audible.com. You can also connect with me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or YouTube. Most importantly, if you're in a crisis, please call 24-7 Crisis Hotline at 1-800-273-8255 or visit suicidepreventionlifeline.org. Don't wait, your life matters.